the Gearing class were the last US Navy destroyer design of World War II. Following on from the vast Fletcher Swarm, the US Navy had developed the Sumner class, which, amongst other things, introduced the twin 5-inch 38 mount to the regular fleet destroyer. The gearings represented a slight upgrade over these ships, with the primary di difference being that the Sumner hull was cut in two, with a 14-foot long section inserted amidships, which gave them a bit more space, which was primarily used for fuel, thus giving the gearings more range, and thanks in part to the altered length-to-breadth ratio, a little bit more speed as well, with most ships able to hit over 36 knots on 60,000 shaft horsepower, both features that were somewhat welcome in the vast expanses of the Pacific War. The ships were mostly named for officers and men who had received the Navy Cross, or Medal of Honor, in operations during World War II, although some of them were also named after more historical decorated figures. The first of a planned 152-ship run was laid down in the spring of 1944, with hulls starting to hit the water in winter of the same year, and the first ships entering service at the very end of 1944 and January 1945, which meant they were just about able to get some of them into active service against Japan during the last stages of World War II. The gearings displaced about 2,600 tonnes at standard load, and just over 3,400 tonnes when at full load. And the main armament would consist of the same three twin 5-inch 38 dual-purpose mounts as the Sumners, with 12 40mm Bofors in two quad and two twin mounts, and 11 single 20mm Orlicans filling out the anti-aircraft battery, with two quintuple torpedo launchers giving a heavy anti-shipping punch, along with sonar and depth charge equipment. Of course, this was as built. However, with advancing technology and an increasing aerial threat, changes were made fairly rapidly, with some of the ships losing a quintuple launcher in favour of another quad 40mm mount, whilst still others were completed without torpedo tubes entirely in favour of a far more extensive radar suite that would allow them to act as forward picket ships for the fleet. With the war coming to the close, large numbers of ships were cancelled, and this dropped the final production run down to 98 hulls actually completed. But their size meant that they were better placed to accept upgrades than basically any other wartime destroyer class in US service, with a typical post-war upgrade replacing the various 40mm and 20mm guns with a pair of twin 3-inch mounts along with two singles for a total of six 3-inch barrels, although some ships would carry fewer than this. A few other hulls were turned into radar pickets with overhauled radar equipment, and still others into anti-submarine warfare specialists, with anti-submarine warfare torpedo launchers and other similar weapons added. With the coming of the Missile Age and other new technology, in the late 1950s and early 1960s, the bulk of the class was given the extensive FRAM-1 upgrade, which basically rebuilt the ships above the main deck, turning them from primarily anti-aircraft destroyers into primarily an anti-submarine warfare platform, with every electronic and weapon system barring two of the twin 5-inch mounts removed, and a new superstructure, electronic suite, and weapons fit installed. Exactly which 5-inch twin mount was removed did vary somewhat from ship to ship, with some losing the super-firing forward mount and others losing the aft mount. The new weapons included specialist anti-submarine torpedo launchers, an octuple ASROC anti-submarine missile system, and a landing pad and hangar for the somewhat questionable DASH drone helicopter. Since the ASROC system could carry a nuclear warhead, these ships would become some of the smallest nuclear-capable warships in regular service. A few of them would receive the more austere FRAM-2 package that had been developed for the smaller Sumners, which largely retained all the main guns but didn't include the ASROC, and in some cases also didn't include DASH. Most ships of the class would then see action in gunfire supporting roles during the Vietnam War, otherwise providing escort screens for the various US carrier and amphibious groups, along with many others being sold into foreign navy service over the decades of the Cold War as they were pushed out of US Navy service in the earlier 1970s. Eventually, the class would see service with 11 other navies, 
with eight or nine ships, depending on how you count, still around, of which six serve as museum ships, two of which are still in the USA. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.